Welcome to How China Works. I'm Brendan Davis. My co-host, Ian Lee, will be with us in just a moment with this week's interview. We have a lot of new listeners, I've noticed, so let me say a few words about the show itself so that you know more about what we're about. We are a weekly podcast focused on helping the world become China smart and on helping Chinese people who are going global to better understand and work with each other. Now, Ian and I were recently in the U.S. for the Harassas China meeting in Las Vegas, and this week we present a short information-packed talk that Ying Ying had with Mr. Frank Mueller. Frank is the CEO of a company called The Bridge to Luxury. They are a consulting firm. They specialize in assisting companies who are working in the high-end products and services markets to better do so. Now, we usually do longer form interviews, and in those we learn about how people came to be doing what they're doing and where they're from and whatnot. But occasionally we do these shorter interviews when we have the opportunity to describe 15 or 20 minutes with someone who we think is really interesting and has a lot to say. So in those, and in this one in particular, we really try to get right to the core of what the guest is focused on. And we save all the backstory for a follow-up, which we hope to do with Frank. In this one, Frank shares some very sharp insights into the shifting Chinese luxury market. And frankly, his thoughts reflect some broader realities about the changing landscape of the country's evolving middle class also. So I think this show is special regardless of your own interest or involvement in the luxury market specifically. You can learn more about The Bridge to Luxury at their website, which is linked in the show notes here if you like. And we'll also do a longer form interview with Frank when time and circumstances permit, as I mentioned. One quick programming note is that Ying and I are both back in Beijing now, and we have several longer form interviews lined up, as well as another live event to schedule here in Beijing hopefully in December. So stay tuned for that and more. You can visit HowChinaWorksPodcast.com to stay in touch with us and learn more. But for now, please enjoy Ying's talk with Frank Mueller. Welcome to How China Works, uh, Mr. Frank, uh, Frank Mueller. Is that right? That's perfect. Perfect pronunciation. Glad Thank you very you. much for hosting me this afternoon. Glad Thank you very you much. Here. Glad to see you here at Horizon China meeting in the beautiful Las Vegas um, evening here. So you were speaking at a panel that is about Chinese middle class, the rise of Chinese middle class. So we are really interested in getting your viewpoints on this, your particular insights on the challenges and uh, maybe the, some opportunities for uh, understanding this particular group in this global dynamic right now we're having. Right. Well, first of all, obviously, the luxury industry was um, strongly driven um, over the last 20 years by the rise of the Chinese middle classes. And as a matter of fact, today, one third um, of the global consumption on prestige and luxury um, goods is driven by Chinese, whether locally in China, whether um, um, as tourists um, abroad. Um, um, so um, the Chinese middle class has played an important role um, in, the, in the growth rates or with regard to the growth rates um, of the international luxury industry, which was obviously fine. Now, the, the question is, will that continue um, to be so? And, um, and here I think we have to start to be more realistic and more sensitive. Um, Yes, um, there will be more people of the Chinese middle class um, um, coming up um, through um, the economic development um, of your um, great country. Um, yes, um, likely there will be an increase of income um, on average per capita. Um, however, um, the prospect of um, opportunities um, needs to be challenged um, by certain threats, um, um, at least long term. Um, one of the major ones, obviously, is demographics. Um, um, as it looks like, um, the group age of the 25 to 64 year old Chinese, that group will shrink by 20% um, till the year 2050. Um, so, so far, if we have been used to the growth rate um, in terms of size of the middle classes, um, eventually, um, that speed will slow down and even um, um, invert into a, a negative um, um, rate. Um, so that's one issue. In particular, luxury is a business about the good mood of people. So if people um, are trustful about the future, if they feel safe with regard to their jobs, with regard to income, and, 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 
um, they are ready to spend their hard-earned money on items that sometimes they don't really need. Um, um, they are items they dream of, that um, define their social status. All important things, yet um, if you're not sure whether um, you will um, keep the, ha have available the money um, as in the past, you may be more cautious about consumption. And here we see, um, given the actual um, um, insecurity, um, for instance, in, in, in terms of see no US trade um, um, discussions. If we see that pollution is a topic in China, um, that um, debt, um, private debt um, has increased, um, that taxation um, is, is different than it used to be, um, um, that we have issues like political correctness, um, um, where people, especially um, in the sensitive middle classes, wonder about their future. Um, this may affect um, as well, besides demographics, um, the, the outlook um, of the luxury industry in, in, in China. So the point is that we, in doing business in China, we must not um, be too naive and just believing um, because it's a big country, um, um, the past will be extrapolated in a linear um, and way as it, as it used to be. Mm -hmm. What do you see the international luxury brands are doing or innovatively in re, re actually in positioning actually if there is any kind of strategy they want to um, develop in order to better penetrate the Chinese market? Do you see any approaches right now? Um, I fear so. Overall, no. Um, the only principal adaptation to local local um, consumer behavior was to um, the usage of testimonials um, not only Hollywood film stars or European um, soccer players um, um, also Chinese actors um, and known people um, so that um, that was an adaptation mm -hmm. yet I think um, the Chinese consumers um, um, across the board um, are getting bored about this very simplistic um, approach. So if the European luxury brands want to continue um, to be esteemed by um, the Chinese middle classes, I think the, um, the effort in terms of um, segmentation, target grouping, in understanding Chinese culture, in, 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 in relating to the long history of China, um, the tradition of craftsmanship, um, all all these aspects of, of the rich heritage of China. We need um, more effort um, to understand that, to adapt better to, um, to um, the Chinese culture. And on top of that, I'm not sure whether there is such thing as the Chinese culture. Um, um, as far as I know, being a foreigner, uh, there's a big difference whether you come from Beijing, whether you come from Hong Kong, whether you come from Shanghai, um, 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 Ningbo, or, 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 or... So it's different, right? The buying, um, the consumption, villainies uh, come from different perspective, different uh, background. I, I believe so, not knowing it in detail, but um, this is the case here in the US. Um, uh, somebody from Texas, Texas is, is a different person. Um, then coming from um, New York or from San Francisco and um, speaking about my home country, the Germans, there is no, no person as the German, but um, region per region and people tend to be at least a little bit different. And, and so here as well, um, I think the effort of, of foreign brands wanting to do business in China, um, as far as luxury is concerned, um, needs to be improved. Mm -hmm. As far as you know, how do you understand or how do you see in foreign brands actually do market research here in China? Do they more hire local uh, talent, bilingual, cross-cultural talent help them to go like dig deeper? For example, besides Beijing, Shanghai, Hong Kong, these uh, very metropolitan cities, they do they actually uh, have interest in going to different demographics of, of you know this kind of consumer uh, cities in, in China? Or you see any kind of approaches like that? Um, what I know for sure is that there are institutes um, that provide um, pretty good data, um, which is representative for particular cities, regions, for men, for certain income um, groups. Um, that is available. What I don't know is whether all uh, brands doing business in China take advantage of, of these data being available. And, and, and uh, as a matter of fact, 
as again as far as the luxury industry is concerned it is not an industry really driven by 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 data by market research um, um, because of so far the business um, has always been relatively strong if you look look back the last 200 years 300 years 400 years so there's a certain well maybe arrogance um, 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 pro being pronounced in a way that uh, top management says we know what we're doing we've been doing it this way quite successfully um, over a long period of time so we don't need to adapt to these modern modern um, tools such as market research now um, given the investments in, in, in uh, needed um, to succeed in China in terms of communication budget setting up offices um, structures um, per, um, staff uh, and 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 I would strongly recommend uh, to European brands um, to take these data and, um, um, available to make sure that money is wisely spent and, and, and risk reduced. You must have engaged a lot with the, the real Chinese consumers, especially regarding the luxury brand area, right? So it, by engaging with them, what do you see their mentality uh, is changing? Or like, what do you see if there's any mentality changing when it comes to regarding regarding buying the uh, luxury brand from Europe? Oh, let me be more specific. Is like a higher middle class uh, consumers from China. What do you particularly see uh, their views on the Western um, high culture uh, things, for example, like very goods or even different lifestyles from mm -hmm. Europe? That's, do you see a change? Do you see they are still actually have great desire in spending uh, on this area in pursuing the let's say your royal, uh, you know, this kind of uh, luxury environment. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. What do you think? Well, um, for sure, there has been a process of sophistication. Um, and that leads to two phenomenons. Um, I believe there's a growing, well, I wouldn't say um, um, mistrust, um, but a growing questioning of foreign brands. Um, um, again, given the fact that um, maybe the effort um, to adapt um, to the Chinese consumers better um, is is inter interpreted by the Chinese as a as an act of disrespect. Um, so um, they feel they may feel a little bit cheated in spending on European on, on European goods, um, luxury goods. Yet um, they don't feel um, a dialogue between the brand and, and the consumer being as close as um, um, in, in, in the Western countries. So there's a growing, growing cons uh, um, in, uncertainty whether um, the European brands are, are really making an effort um, to adopt um, to, to China um, more, more, more specifically. It's more like a chicken and egg. Which attitude is the first? Is that a Chinese attitude or changing or is that a European? No, I think it's the Chinese who, 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 who grow, grow in, 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 in confidence and in self-confidence. And the second phenomenon is they dis discover their own culture again. Hmm. They discover their own traditions again. They discover their own craftsmanships again. Now, given, given the, 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 it, a period of time where luxury was not really um, uh, politically uh, an issue, let's put it this way, um, um, for some decades. Um, unfortunately, there's a break um, of or an interruption of, of, of a certain culture of lifestyle. Um, but discovering the, the past, it's only a matter of time when this discovery will result into local products um, that um, refer to, to um, the former heights of, of Chinese culture, whether in fashion, whether in tableware, whether in furniture, in arts. And that, there's certainly um, a growing, growing market for local um, Chinese or Asia uh, arts. Um, um, regardless the interest in, in modern European paintings um, um, uh, and so on. So we see two tendencies, um, a, a growing, a growing uh, mistrust about um, European um, brands being serious in China and uh, a, a stronger um, uh, process of 
growing self-confidence, which eventually will lead to a local luxury industry made in China. Yeah, actually, as a Chinese, I do witness a growing trend of uh, European brands combined with some local cultural stuff and in making a new art or a new style. Mm -hmm. uh, in which, you know, to which degree do you think that something will really attract Chinese consumers when it comes to the future of the fusion of the European Design and high quality of many, you know, the, the the way of taste as well as the Chinese culture in the confidence in culture. Mm -hmm. To which degree do you see that's a likely um, a possibility in the near future? If you can give us example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, it's a tricky question um, because the nature of of luxury is to be exclusive. Now. Obviously, if, if, if there's a Chinese customer who's very rich, um, and that applies also for a rich customer from the US or from Scandinavia or from Dubai, obviously luxury brands want to, want to, want to be open to the notion of creating bespoke, um, um products, um, mm -hmm. so that someone who, who, who is interested in a luxury brand and, and can afford, uh, may want to express himself individually in the luxury product. Um, however, um, that is um, against the nature of luxury where the brand um, needs to be respected, where the brand um, has a certain history, a certain knowledge. Um, so granting granting um, the customer freedom of, of shaping products is, is, is sort of well, um, a contradiction um, um, to to the notion of um, of of um, um, luxury. Um, so, therefore, yes, fusion is an interesting um, way of creating bespoke, um, semi bespoke offerings um, and, and and taking um, cultural aspects um, yeah, of historical aspects well. exactly um, from China, and you 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 take some aspects from European culture and you mix it and and, the two in, together. and, and in a di dialectical way you you create something new and 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 um, in, in in well um, letting yin and yang fight um, in, in a way. Now, is that good? Um, again, I'm not sure. I think um, luxury brands need to be respected. They need to master the process, and don't uh, don't sh shouldn't shouldn't opportunistically um, reach out too much. So, what I rather mean by European brands respecting um, the Chinese um, um, consumers means together with Chinese partners. To create um, Chinese brands, um, so yes, fusion may be a step step towards um, uh, Chinese brands. Whether it makes sense, I'm not sure because um, yeah, it's a it is not um, flesh or bone. It's it's sort of in between, and whether that really creates something new, exciting, uh, I, I doubt it. So I rather see European brands creating together with with Chinese partners, um, um, Chinese brands, um, um, so that the Chinese um, can take, uh, be, be proud of, of, of what they're creating on their own. Mm, mm. That's a great way to summarize our, our show today. And, and we see, we'll see more and more cross-cultural talents um, who can really make sense of both markets and bridge that gap and make a wonderful product together. That's my job. Um, this is why I'm traveling China, trying to transfer knowledge of branding, luxury branding um, to Chinese partners so that eventually they can um, they really know how to, to do it. And then they, they take their local experience and, 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 and then they create their own luxury industry. I hope your uh, trip is really fruitful. Thank you so much for Thank you very much for um, having me to meet you. Thank you very much.